another spicy day here in Hawaii. Same kind of light, same kind of weather. You still can't see the mountain because of the clouds. But I'm going to continue on here with uh, my overview of the Tascam Porta Capture X8. 32 bit high resolution adaptive multi recorder. What does that mean, adaptive multi recorder? It's a, it's a high resolution recorder. I get that. Why is it a high, why is it an adaptive multi recorder? What is multi about it? And what is adaptive? I guess adaptive is subjective. Uh, it's a beautiful picture. Comes in a nice box. You can, let me see if that's getting that focus. Yeah, you, you, can, you can keep the box. Um, it doesn't come with any kind of a case or protective cover or anything. Uh, they just give you the cardboard box, which is beautiful. Maybe that's what's adaptive about it, is you can adapt to using the cardboard box that it came in. I wish for a four or $500 device, they would give you some kind of a, a case like they used to, Tascam. Uh, it was nice, it came with the DR100 and the Mark II. Uh, nothing sturdy, just a nice little padded case to put the thing in. That was nice, it comes with a bunch of, the, the other one came with a bunch of stuff too, which I'll go over in a minute, but um, anyway, with this one there's no case, so you might wanna think about that, uh, getting yourself some kind of a uh, road case or at least something to protect it with. At the very least, um, if you're gonna be throwing it in a gig bag, uh, wrap it, uh, in some cloth or a, a Ziploc bag, anything like that to protect it a little bit so if it does get a, a bump or a drop, it's not gonna crack the screen or damage the mics or anything. I take off the mics when I'm transporting it, those front mics, I don't leave those on. Uh, they're just too exposed, too exposed and sensitive and those could easily break, break off and maybe even break the jack, so I don't wanna do that. You could consider using the case until you get something better. Just put that back in the case and throw that in your, your bag to go. Instruction manual is online too, by the way. There's not really any kind of instructions in here, but there's an in-depth instruction manual online from Tascam if you wanna check out all the deets. Uh, going over this some more, uh, I already covered um, some of the uh, things I, I like about it, some of the basic, um, kind of a basic overview. Today what I wanna cover more is some of the uh, inner workings of the, uh, the unit and the apps. I call them apps. They're really presets that come with it. Uh, one of the things that I mentioned earlier was that this is uh, not a very good playback recorder. Um, I've worked with other units like the, uh, the Zoom, and they're they're very good at playing back and uh, uh, navigating your 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 files. They're very good at looking through your files and uh, even even allowing you to move files from one folder to another. It wasn't easy, but you could move files around and easily select them. And if so, if you had a couple different projects going especially film projects, you could have a separate folder for each one and then just drop those files or record directly into those folders. Uh, so you wouldn't just have a big long list of all your files, which is basically what you have here. Uh, you've got uh, three basic buttons when you turn it on. Um, the uh, mixer, the home, and the input. Uh, the home is obviously that. And when you're at home, you have access to the uh, this little menu up here, if you touch it, it opens up that little uh, drop-down menu and that sh it shows you your launcher, your browser, general settings, etc. Uh, the only way to get to that is from the home button. You can't access it from the input or from the mixer, which I guess is good because you don't want to be going to it that inadvertently if you're trying to, to record or mix. So you have to go home and select that. What you've got there is launcher, browse, general settings, input select, mix down, record settings, recording guide, and punch in and punch out. Let's go to the launcher first. And this is the basic overview window. This is uh, kind of sweet looking. It, it's a very nice screen. Uh, the touch screen is reasonable. It's not as good as a cell phone or an iPhone or something like that, but it does uh, have some nice uh, abilities to rotate and touch there. Um, these are the different apps that are calling them. Uh, the main one that I use is uh, manual, and we're going to go into that in a minute. To get back, you just hit the home button, um, and you have to go back. That's kind of a pain. You have to always go back to that home button before you can get to the launcher. So I'm going to go over some of the other features real quick, because there's other videos that do that. 
uh, and I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But um, the ones that you're going to need to use are this one here, which is called the browser. And it takes forever to load up. That's one of my, my main problems with it, is that if you're working in the field and somebody says, hey, can you play that back for me real quick between shoot, between takes, uh, you don't have 10 seconds to do that. It, it's, it takes too long to load up and it loads up all the files. This is from a, a film shoot I did. And it's, it's a real world film shoot and there's lots of different takes. We are, we're running and gunning and there's just dozens and dozens of uh, little clips, false, false takes, false starts. And it, it just puts them in a big long list and it gives them a, a kind of a hard to read file name there. Uh, it just gives you the date and sort of a, a European backwards uh, list there. It's, it lists the, the year first and then the, uh, the month and the day instead of clearly specifying, you know, Monday, three o'clock, you know, something like that. Uh, and it just gives you a number. This is the only way you can browse them. You've got to, you've got to go up and down this menu. Uh, it's, not, it's not like you can tap them and go in there and, and rename them very easily. You can't set up a name so that all the files are gonna fall under that name with a number, like the name of the, the film. Um, so I, I really don't like it. Um, the, the, lot, the amount of time that it takes to load is too long. And what's worse is that if you go back, say this, you wanna go back and do another something or other, a recording or whatever, if you go back to it, let me do it again, it has to reload every time. It doesn't stay loaded, <laughs> you know what I mean? So you have to endure this long wait. Uh, there it goes. It's, it's going through all those files from that from two days of shooting, and there, there they are again. So every time you, you exit this window, you have to go back to it and reload them. And that, that's just too long. There's also not much you can do within here. This window uh, doesn't, doesn't allow you to do anything but either go back to the launcher or you can launch a new folder. Uh, which is what I would recommend you do before you start recording. Before you start recording, create yourself a new folder for that project, whether it's a, a, re, a recording session, a live gig, a film shoot, whatever you're doing, create a, lot, a new folder first. And you, this is the only opportunity that you'll get to, um, to do that because after the, folder, after the files fall into that big long list, I haven't figured out a way to select them or select groups of them and drag them or drop them or move them into a folder, which is really a pain in the butt because that's where you want to put them in a folder that you can deliver to the client or at least keep track of them in your own, your own folder system. So considering how long Tascam has been around, I would think that they would get that folder um, uh, system a little bit better by now. But anyway, they haven't, and if, if there's a better way to do this, please let me know. I'm, I'm still learning the device. I've learned a lot about it, but I'm still learning about it every day. It's pretty deep, but that's one of the features I really wish that people, the, the Tascam would uh, cover is the uh, how to organize your folders and files. So if you do create a new folder, that will pop back up on your desktop. If you don't create a, a name, it'll create one for you automatically. And I believe that goes to the top of the list. Let me double check. So it puts it all the way back up at the top which is a pain. And then again, again like I said, if you go out of there and come back to it, you gotta reload every time. <laughs> okay, so you can tell that's kind of a pet peeve of mine. Once you're in there, here it comes. It's loading about 50 or 80 clips that day. Uh, one of the other things I noticed is there's no false take uh, feature in this for filmmakers. One of the things I liked about the uh, Zoom FN8 the FN8 Pro, is that it had a false take folder. So there was a quick button that you could set up so that if you re were recording and then the cameraman or the director said, that's, you know, start again. It's, you don't need to keep that, re that, uh, that clip. You can put it into a false folder, false take folder, I mean. And um, that way you're, you're kind of, you're not trashing them. There, there's, you can still recover them, but you're, you're getting rid of all those little false takes that you need so they're not cluttering up your, your list. There's no way to do that here. Um, if there was a way you could create a folder and then move false takes to that folder, but as far as I know, there's not. The only thing you're allowed to do here is uh, create a new folder, like I said, or you can tap on your file. Actually, what you can do first, let me go back. See, every time. What you can do is simply play the file. Here we go, it's coming up. You can see that's a long wait if you'd have to do that a bunch of times. 
with somebody that's sitting there and watching you, you can play that file. You can either tap it right here, and that will, let me turn it up a little bit. Turn up the volume, this, the volume was on 10 now. It doesn't go to 11. There's no scrub feature here or anything like that. There's just a start and a stop. M, M doesn't do anything. I thought maybe it did, but that, all you can do is start, stop the file, or you can select it, you can touch it, and it'll open up the second screen where you can select the file, which I thought I already did, right? And that drops you back into the manual menu. Very strange. So you have to go back, excuse me, you have to go back to the launcher. There's no quick, there's no, uh, back feature there's just go back you have, you have to go back to the start every time hit that again load it up even though i could see that the file i was still on it has to load it up every time painful isn't it and that's why i don't like this uh to go back in there again so i don't i don't ever hit select because it doesn't do anything <laughs> Unless that's some, something I'm missing, that there's a way you can select multiple files and put them in a folder. I don't get it. Um, you can play the file, obviously, and that will pick, that'll give you a little, little bit more flexibility. Uh, this is where it should go right away, is to, uh, when you select it, it should go to this instead of playing. And then from here, uh, the, what you obviously want to do is to be able to play the file. It took me a minute, though. I was, I was trying to hit the start, and it took me a, real, to, a while to realize that there's no play button on the play window. What you have to do is use the, uh, the button over here, and then you can play the file. It took me a while to figure that out. There we go. And you can see the file is playing now, and you can pause it. If you hit stop, it goes back to the beginning, which is okay. There's no play button there or stop button or pause, there's nothing on the screen. You have to use the home stop button and the pause play. I think you can add a marker. Gunshot. There's gunshots, okay, I'm gonna add some markers there for those two gunshots. That's cool, I do like the marker feature. You can scrub it, and when I say scrub, you're not hearing it. You're just m moving the you can't even do it while it's playing. You have to pause it, and then you can move it. No, you have to stop it. And then you can move it. Yeah, it has to be stopped to slide that around. And there's no scrub listen. You're, you're, you're fast forwarding or rewinding, but you're not hearing anything. You're just seeing the timer go by. That could be better. You should be able to scrub through it. I mean, you have that on any old CD player or MP3, there's usually a way that you can at least play it fast forward. Uh, that's an oversight. Because when I'm, if I have a long take, five minutes long, I don't want to sit there and listen to all of it. I want to scrub through it quickly and find a spot. Uh, the only thing you can do there is, let me stop, play again, is you do have the ability at the bottom to go through it there in increments of 10 seconds. You can skip ahead, which is okay. I mean, so one of those two options for, for moving around quickly. All right. You can go to the next take using these Stand buttons by. here. You can go to a previous take if you want to go back. Stand by. Stand by. Stand by. If you want to go back to, to the take before that, you have to hit the button twice. Otherwise, it'll just go back to the beginning of that take. You see? So you're able to... If I just hit it once, Stand by. Stand by. it just goes back Stand to the by. beginning of the file. Hit it twice, you can go back to the previous file. Okay, um, those are the only features that I found uh, on this part of the screen. You're able to, that's to jump around. You can go to the markers and skip between all your markers, like those gunshots and stuff. Skip back and forth between markers, which is nice. You can go to loop. Uh, if you wanted to go into a loop mode for some reason, I'm not sure why you would want to, but you could loop a section, set in point, set out point. Uh, you can also adjust the speed uh, a little bit up or down. So that's really the only scrub 
that you have. It's sped up, sped up two times now. And you can slow it down. Not very useful, but you do have it. I usually don't mess with it. I usually just leave it on one. And then the last thing you have is key. So I guess for trying to use this as a, um, as a studio, you could change the key if you wanted to do something like that. But I don't know why anybody would want to do that with this device. Um, that's the play menu. Uh, the only thing you can do besides that is go back. There's my list again. Suffice it to say that I avoid the browse window. There's another way to jump around your files. So I don't use select. I rarely hit play or I re rarely use play because there's another way to do that. File information, if you wanted to look over your, your file, you could if you had any questions about it. The date, there the date is a little, displayed a little bit better. I wish that was more like it was in the file name. At least it puts some slashes between the numbers. It shows you the time, the, the, it's not even the time, it's the length. Uh, it told you, told, shows you the size, information like that if you wanted to. I don't know why you would need it, but it, it shows you what sample rate. Uh, the track, here it shows you out of those six tracks, which track that is on, like that track I was just listening to, I was recording a boom mic onto channel three, onto track three. And it shows you all your different, uh, where, that, where that sits on there. If somebody asks what that is, there, it's right there. XRI is something else, I'm not gonna go into that right now. Let's go back. By the way, it took me forever to figure out what X, XRI was. Nobody knows what XRI is, and I, once I found out, I wasn't very impressed with it. So um, hit me up if you want to know what the, the XRI is. Uh, anyway, let's go back to the launcher. No, I don't want to go back to the launcher. I want to go back to that previous menu, but I'm forced to go back to the launcher, load up the files again. I could make a cup of tea while it's doing this. Uh, after file information, you've got file delete. You could go in there and, and delete that if you wanted to. Are you sure? No, I don't want to delete the file right now. It would be nice if you could hit that and say false take and put that in a false take folder instead of deleting it or an additional button instead of having the useless select button. They could have a, at the top, they could have false take. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to go into what Tascam should do with this device. I'm just venting a little bit. Uh, track delete. What's the difference between file delete? I guess file takes the whole, all six tracks and deletes them. Track delete just gets rid of that one and you can select that track. I hope it, yeah, it'll always ask you if you, are you sure? No, I don't want to delete that track, if that's clear. Track delete, change, protect. No. So here's, here's the thing, every time I do something like, like hit change protect, I want, I want to come back to this menu once I hit no. Instead of just going back to that menu, it goes back to this, to the browse, and then I got to re-enter it. So it's, it's just all these little steps you have to do to go back. Change protect, I'm not sure what that is. Okay, here you can rename it, you can mark it, you can divide it if you want to split it up. You can normalize the track if it was really low, I guess you could bring it up which might, I've never tried that with 32-bit. That might be nice if you had a really low recording to normalize it, but I'm more apt to just do that in, in post-production or in my DAW. And that's the end of that menu. Let's go back. That's the browse feature. I don't use it, guys. I just don't use the browse feature. I just wanted to show you all the things that's wrong with it. Um, that should be a very well thought out page because it's super critical. Uh, playback is part of the field recording process. It's not just all recording. You're often asked to review a, a, a file uh, on the fly, and it's usually with somebody who's very busy, a cameraman, a DP, uh, produ you know, somebody's got a thousand other things going on. They don't want to sit there and watch you try to navigate some weird menu just so they can hear if they got audio, if they got that actor uh, recorded correctly. So 
Let's reinvent that, Tascam. Uh, that is something you could do with a firmware update. Uh, it's not hardware, so uh, let's, let's talk about that. I'm gonna go into ASMR. Uh, this is a little preset. The thing about these presets, although they're very handy for novice users, they're not opening up any parameters of the device that aren't available from the manual uh, uh, window. Um, it's just consolidating the controls a little bit, so if you don't know that much about recording and just wanted to do something really quickly, you don't have to set it up like most, most guys do. Uh, if, if you just wanted to pick this up and use this for ASMR, it's fine. Uh, put on your front microphones and go. Uh, it doesn't allow you, it doesn't show you levels the same way. It shows you, you can adjust your, your level here or with the knob, which I'll go over in a second. And then hit record. And uh, if the mics were attached, uh, that would be recording right now. It just showed, and it'll show you the little, uh, here, let me stop and show you that. As again, the silver side is the side that you face towards you. The other side is black. So if you grab it by the silver side, hold the unit and press it down firmly. Make sure I did that right. Yep, press it in and then twist again. Nope, see, I didn't get it right. It's got a little tab on the bottom there that fits into that little, that little guy there. Press down, twist. See how fidgety? This was easy yesterday. There we go. And then the same for the other side. Grab the silver in the back, press it down firmly, and twist. There you're set up. Now you can see a little indicator. Getting that? Yeah. It's getting a nice left and right thing. Okay, and you can adjust your volume there if you wanted to bring it up. And it's nice because you're not going to distort with 32-bit. You, you could go over. So it, it looks like it's peaking, I know. And it should be peaking. It's showing you a peak here, even. But that should be recoverable in uh, post-production, unless you're distorting the microphones. If the microphones are distorting, that's not recoverable. That's the big fallacy about 32-bit, is that it's completely recoverable if you go over. Um, your preamps aren't going to distort, but your microphone might. If you're, if you're sending too much uh, amperage to your microphone, that will distort and you can't recover that. So let's go on to the next window. Left, left, okay, left, right. No, that doesn't do anything. It's just showing handling noise. There's no other buttons available here. Skip, skip. I guess if you had several takes, you could go in there and do that. Let's go back, all the way back to the launcher. The next one is voice recording. This might be handy if you were doing a quick memo. It's a mono recording as opposed to a stereo re recording. The ASMR, ASMR was re uh, a stereo recording. Uh, this is a mono blend of the two mics, which is great for just an uh, uh, interview. Uh, a voicemail, uh, not a voicemail, a voice note, any kind of thing where you don't want a stereo file. You just want to do a quick recording of, of something. Uh, it's going to blend those two mics into one mo mono signal. No real options there. All you can do is just the level. Let's go back. So it'd be nice again if I could just go back instead of going back to the launcher every time. It would save me a step. Uh, the next one's kind of fun for novice recorders. This gives you some different music options. Um, this is a stereo recording. You can see the nice stereo meters there. Uh, it's obviously doing that out in front or whatever mics. Yeah, it's just using the mics up front. It's not giving you the options of using your other mics. And all these presets are kind of making it simple for you to not have to worry about all that. It's just grabbing those front two mics, giving you a stereo, stereo file. So if, if you weren't a recording engineer and, or know anything about it, uh, uh, Grandpa, you can just hit that and you're recording your piano or your guitar or your grandson or whatever. I give you some cool little options here. Like if you hit this button, it gives you some mic setups automatically. No preset is the default, I believe. Then you have piano, acoustic guitar, vocal, wind instrument, string, and band. And it just gives you different levels and reverbs for each of those. Yeah, there's some built-in reverbs right next to it. You can select large, small hall, room, studio plate, plate two. So it does give you some nice little reverbs there. Uh, I can't attest to the quality of those verbs very much. I haven't used them. 
input settings and the reverb. If you turn on the reverb, if you, if you want reverb, click that switch and then you can uh, adjust the type. Like if you wanted a studio instead of a hall and how much of that it defaults at 50%, you can raise or lower that. Um, I got to check. I'm not sure if this records that reverb into the take or if it's just adding it as, uh, as an effect. I think it records, I'll find out. I think it records that reverb that you've selected into your take. Uh, so I don't know if it's baking that into the, the file or not, but um, it's it's cool if you're just doing some some quick scratch music recordings. Uh, I'm sure the quality is fine, uh, so that you have that you've got a good quality recording of uh, of your instrument or your voice, which is really about the extent to which I think people are going to use this device for music recording. Uh, when I say music, I mean uh, studio recording. I don't mean live recording. I mean recording in a studio. Uh, you're not going to try to use this. Uh, instead of a DAW. You know, if you have a, any basic DAW like GarageBand or Logic or anything in your computer uh, or even in your tablet or your phone, I think you're going to be better off than using this. You're better off with your phone and GarageBand than you are with this. All right, I'm sorry to say that. The recording quality is excellent in this. The ability to uh, manipulate your files is very poor. Again, I'm getting off topic a little bit. Um, so there's your reverb, your level. That's really it for music. Um, you can, like I said, you can choose your different uh, instrument, the presets. Um, there you go. There's nothing else here to show you. Back to the launcher. Uh, skipping manual for a minute. Those are the basic recording presets. Uh, here's one more here, which is a little bit handy. If you're doing field recording, it's a stereo file using the front microphones. Uh, it doesn't offer you anything but a high or low gain. So if you had something uh, really soft like uh, crickets, you might kick it into high, grain, high gain. Usually low gain is fine. Input settings, it'll take you straight to the mic inputs. So you, you do have the ability there to choose whether you're using the front mics by default or if you've got a, a, a shotgun mic or something like that plugged into the side, you can select that mic there as well. I'll go into that, I'll go into that in a minute. Um, low cut filter there if you need it. I th think that is determined by what you set it in the system setup, which I'll get to. Um, so you have a low cut filter to r roll off that low end rumble of that. Um, that's it for field recording, I believe. Back through here, back to the launcher. After field recording, you've got this. What is it? Podcast. All right, this one's a little bit fun. Uh, this is actually pretty handy for a podcast where you had, say, two people and you could put uh, two different microphones uh, into, uh, plug into two, two different microphones on each of your, your people. And then you could use the uh, front mics to capture the, uh, the, the room. You go to mixer, turn on the mic you, you want, the front mics. Again, no level, kind of weird. Oh, it takes a second. Okay, just took a minute to kick on. So I'm turning off the three and four, which are these two guys. There, it's showing my front mics on and off. It just takes a second, that's all. And so that's recording these two guys. So you could have that on a tripod facing the scene or the, the group, the table. And then you could turn on one or both of your three and four mics. I think you can assign those to the other side if you wanted. Uh, so you've got two close mics on your, your speakers and then uh, that capturing the room, which is kind of cool. Again, not something that you couldn't easily set up from the manual mode. Uh, it's probably even trickier with this mode because you have to, when you first turn on the app, go back, when I first turn it on, you have to load it. Okay, it's still set up to record because I armed those tracks, but you have to arm them. If you don't arm them, you don't see anything, it might be frustrating like I just showed you. So let's go, you got to go to mixer. So arm your tracks. What's interesting is that if you wanted to turn on those side mics, say phantom powered mics, I don't see a way that you can do that from this window. You'd have to go, oh, there you go. You can go there. You touch on the little mic icon and you can go in there and turn on your phantom power or your other settings. I didn't see that little thing there. There it is though. You see those little mics right in there? That's where you adjust your mic settings. And one of the fun little features of this uh, that Tascam included was a couple 
pad button, not pad buttons, a little, uh, these are basically little trigger buttons that uh, play sound effects. There's uh, five or six sound effects that are included in here. Uh, you can also um, load in your own sound effects, like if you had a theme song or a, a, some kind of a stinger, something like that, you could play uh, either of those uh, by loading, loading them from your uh, SD card. I haven't tried that, but it's set up so you can do that. Um, load up your own stuff. Uh, what they give you is kind of cute. You know what, I'm just going to show you real quick with an external speaker. This is one of the things that I'd recommend you do right away is plug in, uh, not to the external output, that's not powered, so that'll, that won't, that, it needs to go up to a powered, so if I plug in that headphone, Okay, I've just plugged in a little external speaker real quick here because my little speaker on board is not working. The little internal speaker um, is not very loud anyway, so I highly recommend getting a, an external speaker, something you might have lying around. Uh, but anything will do. Just plug it into the uh, external output uh, and turn it on and then you can hear. If you want control over your level from the unit, plug it into the headphone. And then that volume level will work, which is kind of what I do. So you've got applause, and they give you two of them. On B, they give you a little waiting theme song. And you can play them at the same time. I've got B on loop, and there's a way you can adjust that. Go from home over to mixer. Go to mixer, and then you can also, you can also trigger them from here. Uh, what's more, you cl click next to the microphone adjusters right here. You can click that, and it opens up your pad settings. There you can assign A or B. A different sound. You click on that, it'll give you uh, a different tone. I'm on A right now. Oh, you can't trigger it from there. You have to go back. Okay. Again, another little step. Click back in there. You could adjust that to a heartbeat. Be, be nice if you could just play it right from there, right? You have to go back here and play it from there. Go back into it. What else you got? Heartbeat, ding dong, wrong answer. Okay, pretty cheesy, but you get the idea. Uh, and you can do the same on B. If you hop back and forth between A and B, and you can adjust those different. Um, down at the bottom, is it says SD card. Honestly, I haven't tried it, but that's where you would load your, uh, if, it would, if you had an SD card, inserted with sound effects on it, I guess, or, or music on it, I guess it would pop up right there, something I'm going to look into. Uh, so there's your, your preset uh, sound effects. Um, if you go back and go back here, uh, you can do the play method. Uh, that's either a latch, which is the default, pause, replay, one shot, or repeat. Or real briefly, pause just does that right in the middle of the sample. You can pause it, and if you hit pause again, it'll resume. Replay. I'm on B. I'm on A. Let's go to applause. Replay, what does that do? It's like a sample trigger. To, 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 instead of stopping it, it plays it from the beginning all the way through. Uh, so it's like a sampler, uh, a sampler on a keyboard. Uh, replay after that one shot. It doesn't let you stop or pause or replay or re it just plays it all the way through. Let me see. That covers the different uh, modes there. I usually just leave it on latch. Actually, I don't even usually use this at all. So <laughs> there you go. Enough said about the uh, podcast. 
Uh, you only get the two pads. Uh, some other devices have, I think, four pads or more. So if you, you know, better yet, just have something on the side, you know, a little sampler or, or a MIDI trigger or something like that, uh, instead of trying to do it all right from here. Okay, moving on. There is a little tuner built into it. If you needed to tune your guitar, you could plug a mic input into, say, channel three. Something as simple as a tuner, you'd think it would just launch right away, but it's not. I'm trying to select the input down here. Oh, there we go. Here's why. You have to, when you, when you launch that, you have to hit home and then it'll open up input settings. And there you can select the microphone. Let me unplug this then. So you could select the front mic or microphones if you wanted. Looks like just one of them. You can adjust them both. And looks like you got level there now. So you can go back. Very tricky there, guys, for a tuner. I'm in the tuner mode and I'm trying to uh, get some input. Uh, it, it doesn't show any way to arm a track there. That's what I thought these were, but it, you have to go back to the, the menu for some reason and then hit input settings. Pretty counterintuitive, right? But once you're there, you can turn up your microphone. It's clearly showing there. Or can I arm a side mic? Yes, I can. Check, check, check. Check, 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 plenty loud, check, check. And then I want to go back, right? To the tuner, check, 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 nothing. Let's move on. Pretty useless metronome. I guess if all you wanted was a metronome, you could, you could use it for that. But again, there's, there's apps on your phone that do that much better than this. This last little button over here, I don't know why they rotate, by the way. It's, it looks cool, but you can see them all fine from here. I guess it's that they wanted to add more apps in the future, but there's only a couple more slots. So again, a lot of thought went into that little window. I wish they had thought of other things like the metronome or the tuner a little bit better. Um, I think on the update, the firmware update, which is available, uh, I haven't installed it on this um, just yet, but it does allow you some, to save some of those presets. I think it's going to be that you click and hold on it and slide over and you can open up three presets, I believe. Um, I'm going to look into that when I update the unit, but I didn't want to update it just yet because I'm showing you this, this device today. Um, the last little setting here after the metronome is the SD card reader. Um, I haven't used this, but I guess this will just come in handy in case you don't have an SD card reader. Uh, this is where you would insert the card to upload your sound files, I guess, if you wanted songs or something like that. It only works for uh, micro SDs though. So it's not going to work for uh, a regular size SD chip. So it's, I'm not sure exactly what the purpose of that is. I guess it's just so you can load up little sound files for that podcast thing. Um, anyway, something that they have. Let's go back and move on. So you can see those are some of the uh, basic apps and features of the launcher. Uh, we're going to go back here now and... Oh, we don't have to go back. Now the general settings is down at the bottom here. We can go there. Let me cover these uh, real quick so you know what's going on. Recording set settings is the first one. Uh, it allows you to select between file and MP3. If for some reason you wanted to do an MP3, uh, 48 is the default, I believe. You can select your sample rate, 44.1, up to 96. Up to 192 kilohertz recordings uh, is great. Uh, I never go up that high. I always do 48. Um, 96 would be plenty of a fidelity uh, and plenty big files too. Um, and then you have um, the last one, 192. Uh, I have heard many people complaining for some reason about a high frequency noise at 192. Uh, that seems to be one of the stick sticking points for a lot of people on this unit. Why is there a high frequency noise at 192? First of all, who's recording at 192 kilohertz anyway? except for maybe sound designers or something like that. And there's so many other features in this unit that have problems. Why is that one uh, dominating them on the internet? I don't know. People, right? Leave it at 48K and you're good. 24-bit recording is usually great. Um, if the reason you bought this is to use 32-bit float, which is what I have done, 
kick it up to 32-bit, and then you've got the 32-bit the recording. I think it defaults to that, but when you first purchase the unit, but double check that, make sure you go into your sample settings. Excuse me, make sure you go into your bit rate and bit, bit depth and bit rate and then kick that up to 32-bit so you get the full functionality there. Uh, after that, record pause. Um, yeah, record pause, what it does is if you turn it on and hit record, let me go back out of here for a second. So if I got record pause on and I go back to my uh, recorder, let's go to input and you can see all of my tracks are armed just for simplicity's sake here today. So all my mics should be, act should be active. Oops, come on. And I should be seeing level there, right? That's the tricky part and what I don't like about the record pause mode. What it does is it operates a little bit more like the old Tascam DR100, um, which was a feature that allowed you to basically arm the track and record, but you don't see any level or hear anything in your headphones until you actually hit record. And then you can see, and it is recording. But you can't audition your track, you can't see any levels or anything like that once until you hit record. It's not, that, it, it trips me up every time, so I, I don't use that. It's one of the features that I, I didn't like in the original, that you, you, you had to do that, but it was just the way it was. You hit, it was like a safety feature, I guess. You hit record, and it would arm it. Uh, I think it, you could hear it though, and you could see the levels and then you'd have to hit uh, record again to, uh, or play maybe to let it roll. But um, that's not the case in this one. In record, pause, which it is in, you don't see anything. If you hit record, then you can. So I don't use that. Let's go back to it. Recording general settings, record settings. You gotta get pretty quick at navigating this if, to have one of these units. Uh, so I, I don't use record, pause. As you can see, if I go back now, it's not recording. I can see the levels. I can hear them uh, in my headphones. And then what's nice about this is that this, this window right here is gray. When you hit record, it goes to a nice big bright red box and you can clearly see that you're recording. And at the bottom, you can see your, uh, your recording light is on as well. So don't mess around with record pause. If you figure out a reason you want to do that, Actually, there is one reason you'd want to have record pause, and I'll show you. Let's go back to general settings. I turned record pause off, right? Bear witness. You saw me record pause off. There, it's off. Whoops. Auto record. I don't use that. You can set that up for a conference or something like that. So if people weren't talking, I guess it would stop recording and you could set the levels. Or I guess if you were taking dictation, it would auto stop between those. I'm not sure if it would give you a new file every time or just pause it. I haven't tried that, but that's, that's what that's all about. Um, I never use that. Pre-record is what I was getting to, the next feature down. Pre-record is actually kind of handy, especially for you guys working uh, on film sets. Um, what it does is it gives you a, a few seconds uh, once you've hit the record button, it actually pre-records, I believe, six seconds earlier. So the, ba the unit is basically needs to be in a, a standby mode, and it's always listening. And then the second you hit that record button, it records from that moment plus six seconds earlier. In case the camera guy yells, action, oh, is sound rolling, and you know, you, you're slow, and they've already started shooting, but you forgot to hit the button. That way, when you hit that button, you're getting an extra six seconds earlier. So that might save you. The problem with that is as soon as you hit pre-record and turn on pre-record, to arm that feature, it automatically turns on record pause. So that's how it works. Record pause has to be on for the pre-record feature to work and give you that buffer. Um, but I just explained why I don't like record pause. So if I, if I had that on, I went back to my recorder. Um, it appears that nothing's getting in. So my levels are not active. I'm like freaking out. Why, why don't I have levels? The reason is because you have to hit that. And then it's recording plus the six seconds prior. There, you see it's still zero. Six seconds goes by, it should kick in. Very confusing, I know. 
Or is it recording? No, it wasn't, you see. I had to hit record yet again. It was in a standby mode, so you can use the record button all of a sudden becomes a pause button. So I, I don't like it, you know? It's really, you know, when you're in the field, things like that trip you up and you're, you're getting confused and freaking out. It's not a good head state, so. Anyway, enough said about the record pause feature. I don't use it, I disable it, and unfortunately, because of that, I'm unable to use the pre-record feature. If you want to use the pre-record feature, turn it on and get used to working with record pause, but I don't suggest it. If I turn that off, be careful, because if you turn off record, pre-record, record pause is still left on. And you can see this the screen is a little bit sluggish sometimes. You really have to get it. It's not an iPhone. Oh, I see, you can tap it as well. I should know that. You don't have to slide it, you can tap it. Um, time file increment, uh, not for video. Uh, this is in case you wanted to record, um, you wanted to record uh, increments. That is, you wanted to record and stop recording after 30 minutes. I guess that might be good for a podcast or for a sermon or something like that where you want to deliver in chunks of, of a consistent amount of time. Um, 60 minutes is the max. Five minutes is the minimum. Never use it. Uh, time file increment is the last of the features under general settings. So moving on, let's go to our general settings. That's record settings. Let's go to in out settings real quick. Um, mid side decode. Not going to go into that right now. Reverb. Although I never use them, you can select the type of reverb it, that is the default here. Uh, that is, it always goes to a large hall. The source is always on tracks one and two. The level is always at 50. You can adjust that there, but not with this wheel. That's the in-out settings. Oh, the most important is running, or at the top. I, I didn't have those showing. Uh, phantom power. You can adjust the type of phantom power between 48 volts, which is standard, or if you had a 24 volt microphone, you could, adjust, you could select that here. I've never used that. Mic trim, uh, you can adjust your mic trim right there if you want it to go up or down just a little bit, a couple decibels or one, even one decibel, you could adjust that there if you needed to. Um, I don't use those. I don't use anything in input output settings except for speaker on or off. And the thing about it was on the old unit, it was right on the back. It was so simple. They had some of these features. Really, you didn't have to go into a mini menu or anything like that. You had the speaker on or off right there. You had fan and power on or off right there. You had the mic gain, low, medium, high. It was super, super simple. You could even turn the auto limiter on or off. I miss the simplicity of that old unit. And we're gonna talk about that old unit in a minute. I will give you some history on that for reference. But if when you turn when you first turn on your unit out of the box, it defaults to the speaker being off. If you want to use your little mini speaker, I recommend turning that on and just leave it on forever. When you're recording through microphones, it doesn't come out that speaker, which is nice. It it, def it bypasses the speaker, so you're not getting a feedback loop or you're getting volume coming out onto your set or into your recording studio. It it turns off the speaker. So that's the input output settings. Uh, I usually leave level st at, right at 50. Okay, let's go on. Camera settings. Uh, this is where I mentioned earlier, if you've got an output going to uh, your, your camera to record in, uh, from here into your camera, you can adjust the output levels right here uh, with that fader. Uh, and you can also set it from line to camera. If you had a, a certain type of camera that required a louder line out. You can go there. Uh, auto tone is kind of handy. If you wanted to uh, send a tone automatically to your camera so that when you're syncing up in post, you can, automatic, not, you can adjust your levels to a tone. You can have that tone at the beginning only or at the beginning and also at the end of your, of your uh, file. Uh, auto tone, there it is. You can have it at the head or at the head and the tail if you wanted to send out an auto tone. 
And I don't know why they call it auto tone, I guess because it sends that automatically, but you're turning it on so it's not really auto. You can adjust the level here as well. And I think that's it for camera settings. Let's move on. Other settings, how fun. If you had this set up with an Atmos uh, time code generator uh, over Bluetooth, you can, you can set that up here. You would just go in and adjust uh, either from a remote control so that you can use your remote control to control the unit, or you can adjust it to time code and set that up here so it's connecting. Once you've got the Atmos on, you hit connect here, it'll link them through Bluetooth. And then you can use um, your Atmos device to Bluetooth broadcast into this and have time code in this. Uh, something I'm considering doing uh, in the future. But I'm not sure I'm gonna do it that way. There might be another way I can do that because one of the things is, if you do that, won't you lose the ability to use your remote control at the same time? Because it's using that same input from that little chip that I mentioned. Um, so I'm not sure you can use your remote from your phone and use the uh, time code coming in through that same Bluetooth thing. Uh, they might have thought that through a little more carefully. I guess it was to save money so they didn't have to put a Bluetooth unit in the device, but you can see it's creating more problems than it's probably, how much would that have cost to do that? So that's other settings, Bluetooth, I never use it, peak mark, uh, that, uh, uh, that locks your peak mark on your VU if you wanted to do that, uh, I don't. Um, auto mark, you can adjust the levels and the time right here. SD card reader is there too if you wanted to connect that, they give you that in the general settings as well, the, uh, the other settings within the general settings. I know this is kind of boring, guys. Bear with me. System. I never really go in here. This is just, you can adjust your language. I guess the only reason you would want to go in here, again, there's the uh, uh, mysterious XRI. Uh, if something as mysterious as XRI, they should just spell out what that is. You can adjust your date and time right here. Uh, your file name, you can select type, date, word, you can make it say Tascam or whatever you want as the beginning of those file names. Uh, that might be a nice place here where you have an option to type in the name of the uh, project. Is that possible? Um, moving down, there's a file number reset. No, not gonna mess with that right now. You can adjust the language. Uh, here's the only reason I think you'd wanna go in here is either if you wanted to go back to the factory default, you can initialize the unit, or more likely you're gonna just go in there and format the card. Uh, if you wanted to erase your card prior to a new shoot, uh, it's gonna erase obviously all the data on that chip uh, and you're starting fresh, which is a good place to start on a new project. Just make sure you have all that information from the previous project backed up someplace safe. There's two things you can do. You can uh, do a, a race format, which takes a few minutes and, and deletes all the information, or there's a quick format, which is what I recommend. It just takes a few seconds and um, it just takes away the headers. So the information is still on there. It's just, you can't get to it. There's no titles. So quick format usually does the trick. If, if you've got a new chip, uh, or you just want to completely purge the, the, the chip for some reason, use a complete uh, format. Or I should say a race format. That's all for system. The last little thing is power display. Let me go over this real quick and then we'll go to some more interesting stuff, I promise. Um, auto power save mode, uh, that's going to automatically uh, not turn off but pause the unit or put the unit to sleep after a certain amount of time. I don't use that because if I'm in a recording situation, um, I always want everything to be completely active and ready uh, at a moment's notice. I don't want it to go into a power save mode. So when I'm rushing back over there to turn it on right before the show starts, usually carrying a camera or something like that, uh, I'm not confused that it's in a power save mode. So if you're plugged into the wall or you're using a, a a USB battery, um, don't use that. Turn that little puppy off 
and you won't have to worry about it being in a power save mode, especially if you're plugged into the wall. Uh, you're not worrying about saving power at all. It'll just be in a perfect state ready to record. If you're using the uh, in internal batteries, the AA batteries or something like that, I could see the use for that for a long day of maybe turning on auto power save. But just don't forget that it's on, right? Otherwise, I, believe me, I've tried it a couple times and it, it confused me when I came back onto it and I didn't see levels or something like that. Um, so leave that off. Power source select, leave that on auto. That automatically determines uh, what you're using. If you've got the USB plugged in, it'll automatically turn off the battery and go to that. That's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. If you didn't want to use USB power and you wanted to drain your batteries, I guess you could kick it onto battery and uh, it, will, it will use the batteries instead of your limitless power supply. <laughs> Um, here below that battery, you can select the types of batteries you're using. I'm just using alkali. Uh, there we go. Below that power save mode. This is a little bit different than the uh, auto power save mode. This is power save mode. It's a little not so bad. It just it's if you turn that on, it's going to turn the backlight off after 30 seconds. Uh, you can adjust the the brightness as well. The indicators. It will it will. Turn, basically turn those off or dim them uh, so that you uh, use less power. Again, if you're plugged into the, the wall or a, a powerful battery, you don't need those. So I just leave power save mode off as well. So to overview this, just leave everything off and you're good. Uh, if you wanted to adjust the contrast of your screen, you can do that right here. To me, it seems plenty bright at, at halfway, but if you're out in the sunlight and you can't see it, you're trying to see it, you can go into power display in general settings and turn up your contrast all the way. Or you could just always leave that on like that if you're out in the sun all the time. But I'm not all the time. So that covers your different general settings. I'm finding it's much easier just to tap than it is to actually try to slide the slider, guys. So there you have it. Back to these settings go to input select is the next feature. This is a simple uh, an important place where you can adjust uh, what input microphones are going to what tracks. Again, this is a six track recorder. You've got up to six microphones. Uh, this is where you can select where th those will go in pairs. This is Miss Daisy, my associate. She's come in to uh, help us out a little bit today. Check to see if we have any morsels or Cat toys. That's what she's looking for. Yeah. You gotta let her run her course. So the best way to explain this is if you wanted the uh, microphone one and two to go to tracks one and two on your recorder, you select it there. If you wanted mics or line inputs three and four, to go to inputs three and four, you select it right there. And then on the bottom here, five and six, indeed do go to five and six. So it's one, two, three, four, five and six, like that. That's how I have it kind of defaulted. Um, if I wanted to do something a little bit differently, let's just say that I wanted to have my, uh, my XLR boom, my, my boom microphone plugged into input three, which I often do, but I want it to appear on track one so that when the uh, editor opens up my sound file, he'll see six tracks with the first track always being my boom mic. That's a pretty standard procedure. So I might want to have track one be my boom, track two, three, and four being my three lobs. That's kind of how I usually set it up. And then I'll use these two microphones up front maybe to capture the uh, stereo field of the, the ambient sound of the field. But I, I don't want those two mics to appear on track one. I want my boom. So if I was going to do that, you could uh, select um, track one and two and hit three and four instead. And that'll reassign these two to tracks one and two. And then let's say I wanted to have these guys over here uh, go to tracks three and four. You select that there. And then on uh, five on the last two tracks, five and six, it comes from the front mics. Okay, 
So you've got, in my configuration here, I've got a uh, boom mic on three, one, two, three, Three lobs coming in on two, three, and four, tracks two, three, and four, and tracks five and six are going to be my front two uh, ambient microphones. Or uh, something I might often do is plug an external uh, device like a, a CD player or more frequently a, uh, a phone that has music on it. You could take the uh, output from that phone or CD player or whatever your playback device is and plug it into your uh, external line input like that, okay? And then when you ha have the output coming from that, um, you can assign it to tracks five and six. So instead of having it come in from those microphones, you're gonna disable those microphones and have it come in from an external input, which might be nice if you're having music playing back for a music video or something like that. But again, by default, I usually just go one and two, three and four, five and six. Keep things simple. There's also a way that you can have your computer coming in uh, over USB and assign your computer's input to any of those tracks as well. I hope that makes sense. A little confusing there. Mahalo. That's input select. Um, mix down is a button that I've never used, so we're, not, we're gonna go right by that. I guess I should look into it a little bit further, but I'm really not inclined to because I don't wanna use this device for bouncing or mixing down. I'm not using it like a recording studio, so I'm just gonna skip right past that. Recording settings is kind of redundant to use. You could go in there, but you're gonna get these same features, you get these same features in the um, setup window in the general settings. So I'm not sure why you'd want to come in here again and have this window, you know, why, why do you need to do that? Um, recording settings is back in general settings. So I'm not sure why they added it here again and you know, it's, it's already in there so they could have used that for something else. Um, there's no need to have it there. All right. Being on to recording guide is just a quick little kind of useless uh, help menu that'll guide you through uh, getting this thing to record when you first start, but it's, it's, it's kind of silly. Uh, there's no need to have that again there. Uh, just another button that takes up space. Punch in and out is another feature that I'm not going to bother going into on in this video because I'm not using this as a, a multi-track recorder. Uh, so let's not even go into that right now. I'm not going to cover that here. Uh, if somebody else wants to be my guest. All right, let's get on to some more interesting stuff. That covers all the settings in my um, menu right now. We're going to go on to the, uh, the good stuff now. So thanks for sticking around. I know there's a lot of cables and connectors here, and it's probably all a bit overwhelming. Uh, I understand. Uh, the good news is that it's not that much money to get all these and make your port capture all it can be. Most of them will also work with other field recorders as well. If you'd like me to send you a list with all these exact item numbers, just click the link below so I can email it to you directly and save you a lot of time and research. Mahalo is always for watching and I appreciate the interest and support. Aloha from Hilo, Hawaii. Shoots brah!